Have you ever wondered which is better, Blackmagic RAW or Apple ProRes RAW? Well, today I plan on figuring this out. I'm going to compare Blackmagic monitors versus Atmos monitors for capturing and recording. I'm also going to compare both codecs to figure out which has superior image quality. And finally, we're going to test post-production to figure out which is the better for editing and storing on your computer. Let's get started with a quick test. Up here, I'm going to put the letter A or the letter B. One of them will be ProRes RAW and the other will be Blackmagic RAW. And at the end of this intro, we will pick a winner and you can let me know which one you think looks best. Let's quickly go over the setup. The camera I'm going to be using for this is the S5 Mark II from Lumix, as this lets us record both B-RAW from Blackmagic and ProRes RAW from Apple. For lenses, I have a few different L-mount lenses. One thing I will do is I'll make sure that every side-by-side -side image you see in this video will have the same white balance and same lens on to make sure it's fair across the board. To capture the B-roll, I will be using the Blackmagic Video Assist 12G 7-inch and to capture the ProRes roll, I'll be using a Ninja 5. Now, I'm gonna break this down to three sections. For the first section, I wanna compare monitors and not recorders. So for that, I have a Shogun 7 inch, just so I can compare it to the Blackmagic and all is fair with the screen size and features. But just know that both Blackmagic and Atomos do five inch versions also. Something else worth noting about this video is the reason I'm not recording the ProRes RAW on the Shogun 7 inch I have is because it's a little outdated, so it does not accept the latest firmware, what means it's not compatible with a ProRes RAW out of the S5 Mark II only the S5 Mark One. Just know that as I'm comparing the features to the Blackmagic 7 inch, there might be some differences to the newer one. You can check that stuff online, but when I had a quick look, it looked like it was 95% the exact same. So this video is gonna be broken down into three sections. The first section is going to be monitor versus monitor, ignoring all the recording features and just seeing what kind of waveforms, video assist, size, weight, price, all that stuff side by side. And section two is going to be ProRes RAW versus Blackmagic RAW. Looking into how both monitors record and how they capture it if one has different options to the other one. And third and finally, we're going to get into post-production, file sizes, NLE playback, how far we can push it in grading until the images break. To find out which one is the most resilient codec. Right, so which one looked better? Was it A? Was it B? No cheating, comment below either A, B or same if you think there was no difference. And three, two, one. A was ProRes RAW and B was Blackmagic RAW. You're surprised? Is that what you expected? One last thing before we dive into the testing is I'm going to put all my test footage in a download link in the description. This will be as simple as going to the link, clicking it, enter your email, and it will forward you straight to my Dropbox to download all the footage we shot in the tests. So please hit the subscribe button and let's jump into the first test. Comparing both seven inch monitors here, you can see they are quite similar in size. They both have really similar height dimensions, both have seven inch screens, but the Atmos is just a little bit longer um, not sure why this is, it just must be the type of build design they went for. I must admit that I think I'm slightly in favour of the plastics used on the Blackmagic. It just feels a bit more premium. I also think it looks a bit better to the eye. But getting into weight, although the Atmos is bigger, as you can see here, it weighs a little bit less, around 100 or so grams less. To be honest, these are really similar in size and weight. The one place there is an advantage is the Blackmagic has no multicam or like streaming features where Atmos have recently introduced kind of like multi-cam input so you can put multiple SDI inputs into the Atmos Shogun. As you can see to do that with a Blackmagic you, you would need something like this uh, ATM switcher alongside it. So it's good to see that Atmos have managed to squeeze that feature inside such a small package. Comparing scopes they are almost again identical they go from blow for blow. They both have like false colour, focus peaking, waveforms, vector scopes. I would say when it comes down to operation Blackmagic takes the window the menu system on the Blackmagic is just far superior uh, Atomos are a little finicky I don't like the way that it's kind of transparent and there's really small text constantly accidentally clicking stuff I shouldn't be clicking both monitors take NPF style batteries and can carry two at the same time for hot swapping they also have really similar power draws and are both rated 
for the same amount of runtime of similar size batteries. When it comes to the quality of the actual display, I guess it's good to know where I've come from. So I used to run uh, an older style Shogun uh, and I used that for around two or three years alongside when I used to shoot Sony. Uh, I really enjoyed it, but that did end up breaking on me. I did pay to get fixed and then it broke again. I'd really kind of build quality issues with that monitor. I now own a Sumo, the 19 inch director's monitor. And again, although I love that monitor, it has taken a hit to the bottom left corner. The backlight is a bit weird where it's just too, uh, it's like a stop or two too bright. Coming to the Blackmagic, I've only had this Blackmagic monitor for around a month. Seeing the Shogun and the Blackmagic side by side, I do slightly lean into the Blackmagic monitor. Looks more accurate to the display on the Panasonic, I would definitely say that. It also looks to my eyes like it nails the white point more and it has less of a tint in the image. Somewhere where the Atomos display does win though is on peak brightness. I'm not sure what peak brightness means as the Blackmagic monitor on the spec sheet reads to you as just uh, the nit value, but then there is like a nit value and the peak brightness for the Atomos. I'm sure someone below will be able to explain the difference for that, but input wise, these monitors are pretty identical. They both have HDMI in and HDMI out. They both have SDI in and SDI out. They both do cross conversion. They also both have a way of taking XLR inputs. The Blackmagic has two XLR minis where the Atmos has like a little breakout cable. When it comes to media and recording, the Atmos uh, make you purchase this little like plastic caddy that takes an SSD inside. Well, obviously it's like really fast and cheap media. Where the Blackmagic goes for SD cards. I do really prefer the Blackmagic way here because it allows you to put two SD cards in. It allows for like relay recording and backup recording. And Although Angel Bird do make these like custom made SSDs that are already in the shape of the caddy that look really cool. And the Blackmagic also has a USB-C port on the bottom that lets you record to an SSD. Comparing price, as it stands today, the Blackmagic Videosys 12G 7 inch is on sale for 995 in USD. And Atomos's latest Shogun 7 inch monitor recorder is listed at 999, so pretty much identical pricing. Although I will say that in this latest version, Atmos have removed the streaming features. Not sure why this is, but they've chose to do that. So now I guess it's even more of a direct comparison to the Blackmagic 12G. Something else a lot of people do worry about is a latency or delay when using an external monitor or recorder. As you can see here, I pointed the camera at a stopwatch just counting up in milliseconds. Freezing the frame and zooming in, we can see that there's a 253 millisecond delay on the Atomos and a 317 millisecond delay on the Blackmagic. To me, I don't personally notice anything and both monitors work totally fine. Right, let's get into some testing. B-Raw versus ProRes Raw. First up is a sharpness test. This is just me pointing the camera at a lens test chart. As expected, just here without zooming in, you can't see any difference to me. But punching in, to my surprise, I do think there's a little more contrast or something here in the B-Row. I'm not saying it's sharper, but there is definitely like just a bit of contrast, I would say it is. Using the same shot here, I just wanted to move the cameras around a little bit, see if I could get any aliasing or Murray to appear in the shot. Uh, as you can see, really similar don't think any are performing better than the other one again. Right, here I pointed the camera at an x right colour chart just to compare colours from each codec. At first glance, these look pretty identical again, but if we dive in a little deeper and pull up a vector scope, this is the ProRes shot and overlaying the B-Row shot, you can see the B-Row is like capturing a wider range of colours. It's like the ProRes is muting the greens and magentas, when it's like the cold and warm tones, the blues, the yellows, the cyans, the reds, they're almost identical. But just here, down the sides, when you're flicking that on and off, there is definitely a wider amount of colours being captured by the b row Comparing skin tones here, again, there is some slight differences, but very, very similar shots. Most people are not going to be able to tell the difference between these two. But if someone made me pick a winner, I think ProRes just... Maybe he's got a bit more green in there and I think it balances out a bit better. 
Here we have a landscape shot. I just wanted to get outside and see if we could see any differences. But just as we've seen in the sharpness test, there is definitely more contrast in the B-Raw image. So straight out of camera, you're getting a bit of a punchier image. I'm sure this is really easy to match these up, but just good to know, I guess. Here I purposely chose the wrong white balance. I chose 3200 Kelvin when it should have been 5600 Kelvin to match the key light just so I could correct both in post and see how it looks. This is probably a good point for me to talk about why I'm in Adobe Premiere. People who've seen the channel before probably know that I'm a massive Resolve fan and use it for 100% of my projects. ProRes RAW is not something that you can import into Resolve. Obviously Blackmagic RAW is definitely made for Resolve. And I guess Final Cut is made for ProRes RAW. Premiere was the only software I could find without converting footage and stuff. I didn't want to make it too unfair. That would take both codecs. As you can see, we have all the same RAW settings that are available to us in DaVinci Resolve. Well, it's fantastic. You've got to appreciate Blackmagic for allowing that to happen. But if I just click that and click 5600 and press enter, you can see the shot, once I come back to the one with the LUT on it, you can see the shot is easily fixed. Jumping over to the ProRes version, things get a little bit interesting. But there is simply just no way to fix the white balance using the RAW settings. I guess we do still have the 12-bit RAW here. So coming across to the temperature slider, we can maybe, let me just pull a scope up. I would normally correct this using the offset wheel, but I can't seem to find it. <laughs> In Premiere, I'm not sure exactly where that is. I'll just use the temperature slider for ease of use. Looking at the neon sign in the background, looking at my skin, just looks washed. You can see how easy and fast it is to do it the way with the raw settings and time is money and you get better results. So this is something that Apple really needs to sort out, I feel. Here I overexpose by two stops just so we could purposely recover. Here the ProRes image should do much better as there is an exposure slider in the raw settings. All I did was go to the raw settings, enter, minus two, enter on both images. And as you can see, they both look really good and have recovered really well. Here I purposely underexposed by two stops just so I could recover both codecs to see how they performed and if there was any differences in noise or anything like that. All I've done here is gone into the raw settings and entered two in both exposure boxes for both codecs. I don't know how this is coming across on YouTube after compression, but there is definitely more noise in the ProRes image. Not a massive amount more, but there is like five or 10% more grain, I would say. Um, both images would need cleaning up with some denoiser, but both images are probably saveable. But yeah, the black magic raw image is just slightly more clean. So what do I think is better? ProRes raw or black magic raw? I think your decision is almost made for you. I think if you are someone who edits in Final Cut, just simply capture ProRes RAW. And flip to that, if you are someone who edits in DaVinci Resolve, simply capture Blackmagic RAW. I guess it gets a little more complicated when it comes to working inside Premiere. As this takes both of the codecs, whether you're on Mac or PC, I just find it so much easier to recommend the Blackmagic recorders and monitors. They feel really well made. While I've not had the most experience with them, they do give you some sense of confidence that they're going to last quite a while. And when it comes to using ProRes RAW inside of Premiere Pro, you don't even get a white balance slider, you just get the exposure and the colour space. The options are really limited. Apple should really release an update or something that allows better utility inside of third party softwares for ProRes RAW. It's so Apple, the fact that they don't, I guess. My Blackmagic are a company a lot more open to let other competitors and softwares use their fancy compressed raw codec. If you're someone who was definitely stuck with Premiere and not planning on going to Final Cut, not planning on going to DaVinci Resolve, then I would still take the Blackmagic RAW route if it's an option for your camera. But if you want to take your footage to the next level without going out there and buying expensive recorders, use these five tips right here.